raising the minimum wage to over 200,000. Could it have a creeping effect on the Nigeria's economy? Today, we are diving into the complex relationship between the minimum wage increase and the Nigeria economy. Exploring how this change could impact everyone from worker to business owner. Let's start with the comment debate. On one side, we have the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress. They are looking for a substantial increase in the minimum wage, almost a thousand percent increment. On the other side, we have the federal government and the organized private sector proposing a raise of 2,000, about a hundred percent increase. But why such a huge gap between the federal government and the trade unions demand? The union argued that the current wages are insufficient to cover the basic cost of living, while the federal government and the private sector worries about the economic feasibility to meet such demand. But here is something to think about. Could some parties behind the scene be using the Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress to push an agenda against the government? By demanding such a huge uh, minimum wage, they might be setting up the government for failure. Please let me know your opinion on this issue. So, what would happen if, if this proposal were implemented? Let's consider the union's demand first if the least worker is paid a salary of about 200,000 per month. It sounds like a win for workers, but there is more to it. Can Nigeria private sector employing over 16 million workers afford this increase? Given the current economic and the infrastructural challenges the country is facing, it is unlikely. And if they could, think about the broader implication, a weaker NERA, a rampant inflation and a potential crippling labor market. To understand the impact, let's break down how these wages over almost a thousand increments would possibly affect the market in reality. Purchasing power. Higher wages means higher prices. As money supply increases, so does inflation also. If today, with the same 30,000 as minimum wage, a loaf of bread costs for almost a thousand naira, what do you think would become the cost of bread in the market if the minimum wage jumped to over 200,000? We need to bring reality into our demands. I understand the cost of things in the market are on the high side. Minimum wage will not bring down the cost of things in the market. Rather, it will cost a great increase in the cost of commodities and consumables. I think what the labor union should focus on is pressurizing the government to bring down things like the NERA that was depreciated to bring it way towards before the cost of petrol per liter, which is PMS, to be subsidized back. Agricultural products should be subsidized like the fertilizers, seeds should be given to farmers, and insecurity should be controlled. These are the things that could bring the cost of things in the market and could give value to our NERA, not in the increase in the minimum wage. Some other implication of the minimum wages increase. Let's talk about the housing costs. Rent and property prices will go beyond the roof for common men. We should not forget about the unemployment rates in Nigeria. Higher wages bills will force companies to lay off workers to manage costs. I think we should ask ourselves this question. Can a POS outlet afford to pay with worker over 200,000 per month? We shouldn't forget also that the federal government are not the only parties involved in this case. The private sector is involved. Apart from the private sector, the state government and the local government are even involved. In fact, even the state government are saying they can't even pay the 62,000 at which the federal government is proposing. They are proposing of paying 50,000 plus. So this will drastically increase the unemployment rate we're having, worsen the country's already insecurity challenges we're having. The creeping effect will be on the masses because poverty rate will increase. And with higher cost of living, more people fall into poverty. That's why we just increase. What we should think is, how can the market women selling pepper or oil in the market survive? If there is one thing that is for sure that I'm certain of is crime rates. Economic hardship often leads to higher crime rates. Recently, there's a video that was spreading online or a news spreading online of how teenage girls are uh, used as sex agents in our neighboring countries, countries like Ghana. The reason for this is because of the economic hardship in the country. That's why. So what do you think would become of this if the is an high rate of poverty in the land higher than what it is now. People will be forced to go into crime, into ritual activities. So, not just that, this will also lead to high rate of 
uh, out of school children in the country. Study from various economic studies have shown a clear pattern. Uh, significant wages increase always lead to uh, higher market prices of commodities and consumables. Just that, we often forget history in Nigeria. Let's remember during the 70s, during the oil boom, Nigeria experienced increase in revenue, leading General Yakubu Gumon government to significantly increase the salary of workers. This results in inflation and economic imbalance as the increased wages wasn't matched with our productivity gain. It is also important to consider the current unemployment landscape. 90% of private workers are in slavery employment from bank to multinational to hotels, insurance company, etc. Yet, the labor union are focusing primarily on the government workers. What happens to these people in the private sector? Who is fighting their cause? They can't even confront state government or state governors who own salary accumulatively. Some workers in the state are not being paid their salary arrears, not even talked about their promotional arrears or their allowances. Local governments are even struggling to even pay the tax thousand as minimum wage because funds that have been met for the local government have been hijacked by the state government. So how can they even pay the thirty thousand? Uh, the labor union are not even putting concentration into this, forcing the government to fight for the autonomy of the local government because these are part of their union members, but they are focusing on the federal government. So is it that truly there are some people, individuals fighting the government using the labor union? Please share your opinion on this. Okay, let me even ask you, if you are a business person with the current Nigeria economy, can you pay your domestic staff at least the sum of 100,000? Or can you pay your sales reps, your hotel attendant or your bar attendant, in fact, even your git man, 100,000 as his minimum pay? Labor is only fighting for the 12% of the workers in Nigeria. What happens to the 8% of the workers in Nigeria? Or can we buy a bag of rice for over 150,000? The debate on minimum wage increments is a complex issue with no one size fit solution. I believe careful planning, open dialogue and a strategic implementation is possible for us to find a balance that supports workers without destabilizing the economy. And I believe the only way we could have a better living condition in Nigeria is if the labor union could force the government to reduce the price of petrol, which is fuel, reduce the cost of doing business in Nigeria and the high rate of dollar or the net that was depreciated should be subsidized for business people. That is only when we can have a lower cost of living, which was one of the arguments of the labor union that their current earnings cannot match the current uh, cost of living in the country, which is true. But the only best way is to force the government to reduce down the multiple transaction, the cost of fuel, the cost of even traveling to outside the country to do business the ease of doing business in Nigeria and even force the government to reduce the amount that are being paid to politicians instead of finding a way of increasing the burden on the common men. Thanks for watching. If you find this video insightful, please click on the like button, comment, share your opinion on the video. If I'm a bit biased in my video, please let me know in the comment box and also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel.